Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of All Spans. I'm your host, Bull, and good morning to everybody. Y'all already know that in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the big rematch between our Tennessee Volunteers and the Purdue Boilermakers in the Elite Eight Midwest Regional Championship. Now, last time that we played Purdue, we lost 67-71, to but that game was early in the season, and we were a completely different team. We'll look at the stats from that game, but we'll talk about why Tennessee is a different team and why I have a lot more confidence in our capabilities of winning this one moving forward with the stats from both teams, okay, throughout the season, and also just with the matchup analysis. And at the end, I'm going to tell you Tennessee loses if, and Tennessee wins if. One of the things that I can already tell you off the cusp is the way that this game is called by the officials is going to definitely dictate for sure who is going to have more success in this one. We already know that Zach Eady's got probably the most favorable whistle uh, in all of college basketball currently, but maybe in all of college basketball history, but that has not stopped his head coach and Matt Painter coming out, okay, to the media saying, hey, you know, Tennessee plays like a football team, right? He's pretty much saying to the referees, y'all need to be calling more fouls on them. And I think that that's hilarious. I think that that's a coward's way out. And it honestly, it does kind of piss me off. But even Coach Barnes was kind of talking about that in his press conference as well. And I'll say this, and I'm, you know, I'm not being a homer whenever I say this, but I feel like he's right whenever he's saying it. Okay, so last time that we played Purdue, I mean, Edie got all the calls, okay? Purdue pretty much got all the calls. And, uh, you know, Coach Rick Barnes touched on that in his press conference, and he's saying that he doesn't think that it's going to go that way in today's game. And if you've been paying attention to the tournament, especially over the past week or so, the referees have been letting them play, and that's definitely going to be favoring Tennessee. But before we get into anything, as always, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And one more thing that I need to talk about just for all of us Tennessee fans, because I've been seeing some weird stuff out there on social media. And no, it's not bashing players like I always touch on. This one's different, okay? I've been seeing some stuff like on Twitter yesterday, okay? I saw a lady come out and say, hey, you know, Tennessee's baseball team wasn't getting any hits until I put on my lucky sweatshirt. Well, my question was, why wasn't your lucky sweatshirt on to start the game? And I also saw over there on VolQuest.com, inside of the general's quarters, someone said, well, man, you know what? I've got my brother-in-law coming over tomorrow for Easter dinner, and we've never won a game whenever I watch the ball games with them. And right on cue, the first reply to that was, you know what you have to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell all of my volunteer fans, not that I'm necessarily superstitious, but hey, why take the chance? If you've got a lucky shirt or lucky whatever, if there's someone that you watch games with and they're bad, look, I mean, it's going to be on you if we lose, okay? That's the way that you have to be looking at this. Do whatever it takes, okay? You have to give your all for Tennessee, and that includes us as fans. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so this is the box score from our previous game versus Purdue, and like I said, we lost this one 67 to 71. The first thing that I want to point out to y'all is look at the very bottom of Tennessee's box score, and you're going to see Zakai Ziegler with 28 minutes and five points. Now, I think that he played pretty well but he turned the ball over a lot. It says three turnovers, but it seems like he had more than that. They were coming in some critical moments. He didn't start this game, okay? Meshack started for him. And for those of y'all who have been following our basketball program closely, then y'all would know that. But some people may have forgotten. Zakai was not at 100% just yet. And again, he didn't start. And Meshack did. And Meshack has been coming off of the bench outside of last game. We'll kind of touch on that as well. But I do think that Meshack did play good, but he just didn't play as well as Zakai would. So that right there is going to be the most critical thing. And you can take a look at Dalton Connect, who only scored 16 points. Now, he shot pretty good from the field. He only took 13 shots. Now he's getting closer to about 20 shots a game, and he's going to score more points. So that's huge. And as you're just kind of going through, you're seeing guys like Santi, who was out last game, were thinking, okay, that he will be playing coming up in today's game at least you know that's what they're saying but at the same time you just never really know until it's time to go if he is going to be 100 so he did drop eight he hasn't really been doing that here as of late but i do think that he's going to get himself back into proper form and then josiah jordan james only scored three points well he just scored 17 a couple of nights ago right so he's in a much better groove and then you can take a look at tobe awaka who scored six points which is about what he normally or is about what he has been doing, uh, you know, over the past few games, he's been playing well. And we could talk about Jonas Adu, who only scored five points. He's going to have to step up. 
because he didn't look good in our previous game. He's going to have to give us something on the offensive end and especially on the defensive end while guarding Zach Eady, but I think that he will. And you see, man, look, Ganey had 15 points. That's very impressive. I think that he can replicate that, but he won't probably be getting as many minutes as he got in this game. And then JP Estrella, he was getting a whole lot of minutes. I think that he will continue to get minutes. And Phillips also played in this game. So just kind of wanted to give y'all a quick little overview and a reminder of what happened in this game. But if you look at it, we only had two players in double digits, which again was Dalton Connect and Ganey. So we, you know, probably can have three to four players in double digits, and that's going to make all the difference in the world. And we just weren't a very good shooting team at this point in the season. Only 33% from the field, about 27% from three, and 70% from the free throw line. Now, as you're looking at Purdue's numbers from the box score, you're seeing two players stand out to you. We already know about Zach Eady, who dropped 23 points, and then you've got Lawyer, who dropped 27 points. And outside of that, it was, I mean, we kept everybody in check for the most part. So they ended up shooting about 35% from the field and about 27% from three, okay? The exact same numbers from three, and they only shot 60% from the free throw line. So number one, Zakai Zila not being at 100% in the previous game versus being about 110% now, is gonna make all the difference in the world as long as he's not gassed because he did look tired towards the end of that Creighton game, but hopefully he was able to get his rest in the past, you know, whatever, 48 hours, and he's gonna be ready to rock and roll. But we see that this team just kind of follows suit with his level of play, okay? Whenever he starts to play more intense, we're seeing everyone else doing it. And whenever we play defense, how we play versus Creighton, I don't think anyone in the entire country can mess with us, period. It just doesn't matter. That was lockdown defense. And, you know, I'm very proud of the way that we performed out there, especially with Santi being out. And speaking of Santi, he is expected to be back today. Does that mean he's going to be thrown into that starting lineup? We don't know, okay? Again, Meshack did start versus Purdue last time, but he was starting at point guard instead of at the two. I think that he's a lot more of a two than he is a one. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Coach Barnes decides to do with that. I will lean more towards the team looked great with Meshack in the starting rotation, so leave him there. But we need Santi to be able to come off of the bench and maybe play, you know, sort of a six-man role. I think that that could fit his skill set very well because I think he kind of wants to be that guy. I think that it helps his confidence out a lot, and you can't be that if you're on the court at the same time as DK. So we'll see how that plays out. I think that that could be another added bonus for this team. And, you know, we talked about Triple J only getting three points in that game. Well, he had 17 versus Creighton, and he looks extremely confident, not just in scoring, but also you know, as a defender and getting rebounds and just playing with a whole lot of attitude. I love to see that. Now, somebody who I'm kind of expecting to play very similar, very similarly to the way that they did before uh, would be Jonas Adu. Okay, and I kind of hate to say that, but it seems like he does tend to kind of fold in these bigger moments versus better players. But if he can respond, okay, if he responds, then watch out, okay? If he comes out and if he has a really big game, if he plays well, then, I mean, I think that we could really run away with this one. Not to, you know, get into the next segment too quickly, but I just wanted to touch on that for Jonas Adu. And then DK, a couple of things we could talk about with him. Number one, he's scoring at a much higher clip, something that we touched on, but not just that, he's playing better defense. Still isn't great, but it's a lot better than it was versus Purdue earlier in the season. And I think that this team as a whole is just clicking well. We could talk about Ganey coming off of the bench. He's, you know, he was confident then, but I think he's even more confident now and especially on defense. Again, if he plays how he played versus Creighton, then, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for anybody outside of Edie to score very many points. And Tobe Awaka, I think that he played great versus Edie. He did a you know really good job of getting him away from the basket. He was very strong at the point of contact, and we're going to need a whole lot more of that, obviously, coming up in today's game. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the current matchup and see how do our Vols stack up versus Purdue. All right, so number one, 44% of users picked Purdue and only 22% picked Tennessee. We already know that the 22% to pick Tennessee are the ones that actually know what the heck is going on. Now, on down to the team comparison. They're ranked third, we're ranked seventh. They're nine and zero versus top 25, we're seven and four. They had the second strongest strength of schedule. We had the fifth strongest. They're averaging about 84 points per game. We're averaging 79. 
they are limiting opponents to 69 points per game. We're limiting opponents to 67 points per game. Now on down to the last 10 games, they're 9-1, we're 8-2. and two. And the team statistics, they're shooting at about 49% from the field. We're shooting 44%. They're shooting 41% from three. We're at 34%. They're shooting 72% from the free throw line. And we're at 75%. So we're winning in that category. And that's going to be huge in this game for sure. We already know who the key players are. It's DK and it's Edie. And it's going to be tough, I think, for either team to slow down either player. So is it going to come down to... Which two of those can have a better game or is it going to be more about the team? I'm going to lean more towards the team and I think that Tennessee is the better team from top to bottom. All right, now let's take a look at their stats as a team, right? So we already know that Zach Eady is a seven foot four, seven foot five, walking double double. He's going to get his. That's pretty much guaranteed and it's pretty much nothing that anyone can do to stop it. But on down to Braden Smith who is a six foot guard and he's averaging 12.3 points per game. You see that he goes out and he gets rebounds too. Okay. He's kind of a do it all guy, but he does turn that ball over. Okay. 2.6 turnovers a game. So I think that we're going to continue to take advantage of that. That was a huge issue for us versus Purdue in the last game, but we did turn them over more than they turned us over. I think we had 10 turnovers and they had 16 in the previous game. Watch out for the turnovers. That's going to be big in this one. Now, Lance Jones, who is six foot one, He's averaging 12 points per game, and he's a very similar player to Braden Smith. These guys are really going to be a lot more of catch and shoot, not a whole lot of creating their own. And Fletcher Lawyer, who's different, okay? He can create his own shot, and he's a guy that gets down the court pretty quickly, but he can shoot, right? Averaging 10 and a half points a game at six foot four, and on down to Mason Gillis, who is a six foot six guard. He is averaging 6.8 points per game. And, you know, he's a pretty solid player, okay? You can look at all of the field goal percentages and the three-point percentages, and he's a guy that can most definitely go off from the three-point line. Now down on to Trey Kaufman-Wren, who is a 6'9 forward, averaging 6.6 .6 points per game. And on down to Camden Hyde, or Hyde, I don't really know how to say his name, but he's averaging about 12.6 minutes per game, so I figured he would be important for us to talk about. And he's averaging 3.5 points per game, but he can shoot that three ball He's not doing a whole lot of anything else, but definitely we're going to have to guard him out there on the perimeter. All right, so just looking at the roster, looking at the stats and things like that, nobody outside of Edie and Lawyer should scare you, okay? I mean, there really isn't a whole lot of talent on this team. Now, they can shoot, but they're smaller players for the most part. They do have some taller guys. They've got, you know, plenty of length, but it's either freshmen or it's just guys that don't get into the game as much for whatever reason. So it's not a whole lot for us to have to worry about. And I feel like this defense as a whole has come such a long way uh, just in being able to execute better. So I feel like the game plan on defense at least is going to be exactly what it was before. Let's just execute it better, right? DK, who's probably our weak link on defense, has come such a long way since the last time that we played Purdue. And so is ZZ, who is our best defender, period. He didn't play anything like that last time that we played Purdue. We can also talk about uh, you know, Triple J, okay? Triple J's playing with the utmost confidence on offense and defense. So is Ganey, so is Meshack, so is Tobe. And I definitely feel like Mr. Santi coming back, uh, you know, from being sick, if he's feeling 100%, is going to have a really big game. You know, I think that he could end up being the X factor. Watch out for him to come and ball out. I just think, honestly speaking, y'all, we've got a chance to run away with this one, okay? There's a lot of people that's picking Purdue, but again, it's really all going to depend on how that whistle is being blown and in favor of who. But if it's refereed fairly, then Tennessee should win this game. And, you know, by about 10 to 15 points, in my opinion. But let's go ahead and jump into the last segment of the day. All right, so Tennessee loses if we let Purdue shooters get hot early. Now, I know this might sound obvious, but a lot of people's idea is just to try to stop Zach Eady. But you really can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. He's going to get his, you know, 20 and 10 or you know, whatever he gets. I mean, he's, a you know, again, he's a walking double-double and he's just going to get that. It's going to be a lot more important for us to make him shoot some difficult shots away from the basket. Don't let him get right up under it, okay? Like we saw Jonas Adu doing in the previous game, okay? If he can play strong at the point of contact and keep him away from the basket, then Edie is, you know, not going to be the most efficient scorer. He will still score 20, but he's not going to score 50. And that's going to be the biggest thing. I don't feel like we have to double-team him too much to stop him from getting to 50 points. But it's also going to be very important for us to close out on the shooters and maybe even more important because once they get hot, then all of a sudden they've got the inside outside game working. 
and then there's nothing that you can do to stop them, okay? Like, you just cannot dedicate enough people to being able to stop Edie, who, again, is going to get his, and also be able to stop the shooters out there on the perimeters if they're hot. So that's going to be the biggest thing for Tennessee to focus on in this one. That was a primary focus for us in the previous game, but, again, we just didn't, you know, we weren't really able to execute it. I think that we will be able to today. Now, Tennessee wins if we come out and we shoot hot, okay? We have got to start this game out hot from the field, okay? We've got to shoot with confidence. We talk about that all the time. But we cannot have a cold shooting spell like we have in previous games, right? And we've actually won those games, but I don't think that it will work in today's game. We've got to shoot over 40% from the field. Can y'all give me 40%? If y'all can give me that, then we're going to win this game. Because our defense, I mean, we're going to force turnovers, right? I mean, we are going to tire them out. Like, we're, we're going to gas them. And we're going to make them second-guess themselves if, okay, if we come out and close out on the perimeter shooters early. And we touched on this a hundred times in this video, but Tennessee will lose if Zach Eady is getting all of the calls. And somebody has got to be more vocal about this on a national stage to let these referees know, hey, man, like y'all cannot try to, you know, referee him differently than everybody else just because he's seven foot five. OK, just just because his elbows are right in people's faces. If his elbow hits someone's face, that's a foul, right? Like you can't just let him get away with murder. And if they, you know, officiate this game fairly, then Tennessee wins. All right, but that's going to be it for this video, y'all. I wanted to keep it short, just a little, you know, pregame warm-up before we actually get into the game. I already know that y'all are probably anxious and excited for it. I am, too. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section. And as always, thank y'all for sticking all the way to the end. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.